Hello, everyone. My name is Javier, and I'm here to talk about Dixinet. Uh, first of all, thank you guys for using this model. Uh, as you know, this is a uh, deep uh, learning based approach for edge detection. It's one of the, I mean, it's a, there is in the state of the art, but in the literature, you can find a lot of uh, models uh, for edge detection, and this is one of them. And I am here to talk about a little bit what is the uh, special features of this event and how you can use in your computer. And that's it. Let's see. First, a little introduction of uh, edge detectors based on CNN. Uh, as you know, or most you know, discovered in the future, there is a lot of uh, models proposed to the community. I mean, before 2015, there was a lot of more, but I think we start with the ICCV 2015 because HEAD is one of the proposals that help us uh, improve the work in the edge detection area with CNNs. So as you can see, uh, here's an amazing works like RCF, BDC, and CATS, and you can find a lot, lot more. Uh, anyway, what is the difference Dixinet with this kind of uh, proposals? Dixinet, first of all, uh, with the different uh, Dixinet present, sorry, my English is a little terrible yet. Uh, well, uh, Dixinet does not use pre-training weights. And why this is an advantage? Because uh, if you use learning, uh, if you start learning, image processing or computer vision, you, uh, in your first classes, you start learning edge detection. But if you start learning convolutional neural networks or deep learning, you cannot do that because there is a son of advantage setting you need to understand before a learn CNN with edge detection. So for example, this is the per training weight. You have first to learn and start learning how to train, how to test, and what are the checkpoints, and then you can fine tuning or, or make transfer learning. And in this case, uh, with this unit, we don't need these this kind of uh, settings. And the other thing with this unit is that you don't need hyperparameter. I mean, you need hyperparameter settings, yes. But the difference with the, with the models in the state of the art is that we are not changing like learning, learning rate in the layer level. So we are just uh, training just like in the image recognition or classification. So we don't need this part. And that is one of the one of the advantage of Dixinet. And the other thing is Biped. We uh, carry fully annotated Biped and we are in the second version of Biped. And I think it's it worked pretty good in most of the in most of the areas where you are using guys. So anyway, uh, our first publication was in 2020, but we start uh, learning a little bit more edge detection in, in 2018. And just the last year, we presented the um, uh, second version of, of Dixinet. Uh, I mean, the Dixinet as an architecture and uh, the data set for edge detection that we pro proposed in the first version of Dixinet. So uh, that's it. As you can see, uh, our model, of course, our model right now, this model has uh, more, more or less 35 million of parameters. It's a lot. So um, the thing is that we have now uh, a model that can learn uh, quite similar to the classification or image recognition. We don't need uh, a lot of uh, fine tuning and I mean, a hyperparameter setting to reach, uh, I don't know, the, the best result as in the state of the art. Okay, well, now uh, we can go to the repo. Uh, here you can find, and thank you for following us. And as you can see, uh, this is the last version of Dixinet, which was implemented in PyTorch. 
if you want to see the first version, which was implemented with a TensorFlow, you can go to legacy and there you can find all of you what, whatever you need. Okay, right now, um, when we are in the, in the repo, the thing, uh, what we can do is just a uh, clone the link I enter to our terminal. Okay, I will go to the folder. Uh, here's the Dixinet directory. I will delete before. Okay, right now we can clone. Okay. Now, uh, before we start, we have to read a little bit more about the information we are given here. Uh, the most important thing is that we need to download the checkpoints, train it on Bypend. And here is the, the checkpoint. I don't know what happened these days, but I have a little problem with my internet connection today, so I downloaded previously. Anyway. I have this checkpoint here, and then I have to put this checkpoint in this direction. Okay. Um, here are more information. If you want, you can see it. And uh, he, uh, here you can find, for example, the, the data set used for the chain paper. Uh, we have impl we have uh, information. I mean, we have vapid in in our proper space. I mean, in another Google Drive and in Kaggle. I have no. I I, I am trying to understand how the Kaggle works. Sorry, guys. <laughs> but here you can find the first and the second version of vapid, and you can work with. Uh, you can work with the version one or the version two. It depends on you, but I suggest the version two. Okay. Uh, now we have a, our repository in our local computer. So we can go here and to run the test. Remember, please, we should create these folders. Okay, this is the easy part. Um, I can click here. Okay, now I am going to copy the checkpoint. Here we go. So now we have the checkpoint and, uh, okay, before the start, I will give you a little, run, a little more information about the, this repository. In, in data folder, we have an image, so we can test this one. We can run. Okay, I'm running in my laptop, so maybe it will take longer than your computer. Okay, here is the result. And we have Lena at Smart now. Okay, that's it.
And uh, what one thing I can and show you is that maybe we can open and give you a little more details about the, the structure of the Xenet. Okay, here is the project. And in the minus script, you can find the whole of the configuration that you need to do for training or testing the Xenet. And if you want to check the direction of the organization of the data set what, that you want to use, you should go to the script data set. And in the data set, you will find a lot of uh, previous configuration of the data set used for test digs. In this case, we have Viper, BSDS, Brint, um, another, and many other data set. And here we have the, the directory where is my data set the list of the images for the training and the testing. Mm -hmm. And if you choose uh, the configuration here, this is for the, the training, uh, for, sorry, this is to, to test the data set for the testing. And you can say, we can put zero and uh, for, for biped. And, If you want to try a new data set, maybe you, you should come you should make some changes here and here. And that's it guys. Hope you enjoy it.